Hey guys, happy Wednesday. Hope everybody is doing well out there today. Uh, it, the topic of today's video has come up several times in the comment section. Uh, people asking me to do a video on a Docker application called Code Server. So I ran over to hub.docker.com and uh, took a look. Of course, I, I found a Linux server.io image that we're gonna take a look at here. Uh, so if we jump over to my desktop, uh, here we can see that Linux server.io uh, hub.docker.com page. Uh, if we scroll down a little bit here, uh, we can say we can see right here, Code Server is a VS code, which I'm guessing is Visual Studio code, running on a remote server, ro remote server, accessible through the browser. Um, so if we click that, it's going to bring us over here, and we can kind of see uh, that Coder.com looks pretty legit, um, and uh, they do all kinds of crazy stuff here. Right there is a link to the repo, uh, which will take you over to, to GitHub. Um, but none of that really matters unless you're looking for uh, more information. Of course, if you're looking for more, more information, you can find all of that here. So I will have this all linked in the description down below. Uh, so let's go ahead and close that and we'll close that. So if we scroll down a little further here, we can see that it uh, should work on uh, ARM processors, desktop processors, basically whatever should work just fine. Um, and then if we scroll down a little bit, we've got development and latest for tags. So if you want to try out the beta versions or whatever, uh, you can use the development tag uh, in your uh, in your Docker Compose here. Uh, so basically, all we're going to do is just copy this uh, over to here, like I've already done. And then we got to change just a few little things here. Uh, starting up here in environmental variables, uh, you'll want to change the PUID and PGID. Uh, the time zone, I'm close to Denver, so I put that in. Passwords, uh, those are optional. I'm not entirely sure what they do uh, as it's never asked me for a password to do anything. Now, I haven't done much research here, uh, but when I go to the container, it just works. There's no password requirements or anything like that. So uh, use this at your own risk or whatever. Again, it does say it's optional. Same with the proxy domain, that one's optional. Uh, I've got that in there. We're gonna take a look at that because uh, we are gonna make this accessible from the internet only because I know that it's gonna come up. Somebody's going to ask um, and uh, we're gonna do some troubleshooting on that uh, here briefly. <clears throat> uh, below that, we've got volumes. Uh, this is uh, the volume on my server. Uh, if we come over here, I've just created a config uh, folder here and this is the absolute path that's in there, uh, right there. And then I've just uh, tagged it with code server so that it goes into its own separate subfolder. Uh, below that, we've got a couple, we've got port uh, 8443. Uh, that's just what it works on. If you're, for some reason you've managed to use that, change it, uh, but just change the first one, don't change the second one. And then restart less stopped, that's fine. I uh, don't no need to change that. Um, and then uh, everything else here looks good to go. So all we've got to do now is just click on deploy the stack. Uh, so we'll give this a minute to deploy, do its thing, uh, and then we'll take a look at the logs, make sure everything's running properly. And then of course, we'll jump over and take a look uh, at code server in the browser. All right, so now that has loaded. So let's go ahead and open up code server. Let's take a look at the logs here. Uh, it looks like this is working. Uh, it looks like we've got everything up and running. So let's go over to, uh, wow, well, if I could type, uh, panda.local8, 443. Oh, okay, so I lied. It did ask me for a password. Uh, so we'll type in password and there we go. Now we're logged in. Uh, now we can uh, take a look uh, at workspaces, uh, outlines, timelines, all of that's in here. I'm gonna be honest, I've never actually used this for anything. Uh, I deployed it on uh, one of my servers to test to make sure it would work prior to doing this video. Uh, but outside of that, uh, I've done nothing with it, so uh, I'm not entirely sure what the quirks are going to be with this. Uh, but what I do want to do here uh, is actually take a look at making this accessible um, via a domain name. So let me come over here to my Nginx proxy manager. I'm just going to do, I'm going to add a proxy host here. So the domain name is going to be uh, code.db techyt.com, like so. Um, I'm going to do uh, 192.168.1.30, 8443. Um, <clears throat> we're going to make it publicly accessible. That's fine. Um, we're going to block common exploits. I'm not going to turn on WebSockets right now, but we will have to do that in a minute. I just want to show you uh, what we're up against here. Uh, so then we'll come over to SSLs. 
Uh, we're going to request a new SSL. We'll do a force. We'll do HTTP2 support, because I always do. And then we'll agree to the terms of service. Make sure that all looks fine. Uh, yep. Yeah. So then we'll go ahead and click on save. All right, so now we've got code uh, dbtechyt.com. So I'm going to click that. And now we just get a white screen. Um, this is why I wanted to show it working on a domain name. Uh, the reason for that is we need to come over to here uh, and open this up, go to edit. We need to make sure that WebSocket support is enabled. Uh, and if we come over here uh, to advance, we want to make sure that force and HTTP2 are both checked. Uh, something I've noticed here is that for some reason, these don't ever actually check or check themselves when you do this. You've always got to go back in and redo it. Uh, but I had to have HTTP2 support and WebSocket support uh, enabled in order for this to work. So now if I refresh, oops, there it goes. Now everything works. Um, and that's the only way I found to get it to work. Uh, so you definitely want to make sure that if you want to make this remotely accessible, uh, that you do enable those two things, both WebSockets and HTTP2 support. So that's it, guys. That, I mean, that's really it. It was super easy to set up and install. Uh, I did the troubleshooting ahead of time to know how to access it or access it remotely, that sort of thing. Um, so hopefully you found the video helpful. If you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. It would help me out a bunch. Um, also, uh, like I said, all of this will be available in the uh, description down below. Uh, while you're down there, there are a couple of other links. Uh, if you wanted to take a look at, if you wanted to support the channel, uh, one is coffee. That's a one-time tip jar uh, where you can just send me a couple of bucks uh, just to say thanks. Also, there is a uh, Patreon link down there. Uh, there are I, presently, I think, three levels at which you can subscribe. Two of those levels will give you access to a uh, patrons-only Discord server where we can hang out and chat. You can ask all kinds of questions, uh, get help with things, that sort of stuff. Uh, all of that will be available in the description down below. But I think with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. Um, so as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.